property of equality for exponentials. It looks like this. Um, first of all, what's an exponential? Well, exponential equation or exponential expression. Um, and it's, uh, it's an equation or an expression where we have a power where the variable is the exponent. Okay, so that's, that's something kind of new. So it turns out that if we have an equation where we have uh, the, the power um, has a variable and, uh, and it's equal to another power um, where the two bases are the same, it turns out that we can just set the two exponents equal to each other. So if we have a power where we have a very, uh, an exponent of x and another power where we have an exponent of y, then in this case, the, the, in, from the property of equality for exponentials, we can say that x must equal y. This, this is known as the property of equality for exponentials. You can take this as a given. If you have a power where the, the base, where, well, if you have two powers that are equal to each other and they have the same base, their exponents must be equal. And so, oh, and by the way, it works the other way around as well. If we have two things equal to each other, we could raise them to the same, we, we could put a base underneath each one of them, and that would be a legitimate equation as well. Let's take a quick look. Let's uh, try this property out so that you get a sense of how it works. Um, it turns out if we have something like this, like 2 to the power of x, and that equals 2 to the power of 3, it turns out that we can just say, very simply, that x equals 3. That's not too horrible. That, 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 hopefully that makes sense to you. I mean, heck, if I put a 3 in there, wouldn't these two look exactly alike? Now, the thing is, of course, uh, this gets a little more complicated. Um, so sometimes you have uh, two things where it looks, well, first of all, you could have something like this. You could have uh, 3 to the power of uh, y minus 7 equals 3 to the power of um, f uh, how about uh, 11y um, plus 2. And in this case, we can also set the um, two exponents equal to each other. Uh, it's y minus 7 equals 11y plus 2. And then, and then we've just got a simple linear equation to solve. And we love those. So uh, this guy is subtract y from both sides, so I get 10y. Uh, subtract 2 from both sides, so I get negative 9, and that leaves me with y equals negative 9 divided by 10. And if I wanted to, I could plug negative 9 tenths into here and here, and it should turn out that, this, the, that these two things are equal to one another. Um, that's the way it works. That's pretty cool, actually. Kinda, kinda tricky, kinda sophisticated. Now we can get a little more tricky, and uh, you could have a situation where you have something like uh, two things that look like the bases are not equal, like uh, something like uh, four to the power of three y minus five equals eight to the power of uh, two plus five y. And uh, there it looks like, oh, this is no good. Um, this says the two bases have to be the same. 4 and 8 are not the same. But we can rewrite 4 as a power of 2, and we can rewrite 8 as a power of 2. So this is really 2 squared raised to the power of 3y minus 5. And 8 is really 2 cubed raised to the power of 2 plus 5y. And then you can go ahead and use the proper... Oh, uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, um, this, uh, this is a power of a power. So what we do is we multiply this 2 times this stuff, and we do have to distribute. So it's really 2 raised to the power of 6y minus 10. Remember, power of a power. And that's equal to 2 raised to the power of 3 times 2 plus 5y. So that's 6 plus 15y. And then we can go ahead and set the uh, two exponents equal to each other. So 6y minus 10 equals 6 plus 15y. And that's a pretty nifty way to get things done. Um, let's go ahead and uh, combine the y's together. So I think that gets me 9y over here, negative 16 over here. And when we divide both sides, we get y equals 
negative 16 divided by 9. And uh, although some people think that you could reduce this, you can't. To do that, you'd have to square root the top and the bottom. Don't, don't do that. That, that's, that. that doesn't give you the same number. You can try it yourself if you don't believe me. Um, use the calculator to verify. Anyways, this is reduced. This is as simple as it gets. And again, if we plugged in negative 16 ninths here and here, this we should be able to show that these two sides are equal to each other. Okay, that's all I got for you on property of equality for exponentials.